I am Abby. I am Top Nut Stitcher. It's Christmas! And this is floss tube number something. Um, if you're new, welcome. This is a channel where we talk about cross stitch. Everybody's saying that, so I'm saying it too. Because I like to follow trends. Um, if you are returning, thank you so much for coming back and hanging out with me. My last two videos have been super fun, awesome collaborations with my evil twin, Ryan, of Wild Violet Cross Stitch, and so I'm back solo today for a kind of overdue, typical, regular update where we're going to go through all the things, uh, whips, finishes, FFOs, haul, shop news, <gasps> new top knot designs. I'm going off brand today. Sorry. Um, I have two giveaway winners because I'm overdue for announcing the last two giveaways. Um, like way overdue. And then a new giveaway, ooh. And I have some shout outs. I have whatever else I think of that we come across as we're talking. I do have more of a plan today. Proof. Jam uh, toward the top of this. So if I forget something, it's his fault because he ate it. Um, we're out in the living room today. Hooray! Here's our Christmas tree. You'll notice there's no cross stitch ornaments on this and um, one of them is actually hanging up on the door uh, and one of them was hanging but Jam started playing with it and I'm going to show you two new ones that will be going on there. One isn't actually done. Yeah, it works. Um, let's just jump into FFOs, shall we? Wait, let me see. So since Ryan and I made our last video, it's been about a month. Um, work's been busy. The shop has been busy. Thank you all for your support and patronage. Um, shop update before we get started. The last day to place orders for 2020, nope, 2019, <laughs> um, is going to be next week on Sunday, December 15th because then I will make and ship out those orders that week and then I will not be taking new orders until after the new year. Um, I'll be spending part of the holiday traveling and part of it um, just not not doing top knot work. Uh, so if you have a need for needle minders and scissors and things and you want it before January 7th, order this week. Okay, with that shop news out of the way, let's take a look at my FFOs. I'm so excited. Um, last time I, <laughs> when I was filming with Ryan, I asked for her consultation because this is a wild violet pattern and she approved this frame choice and laughed at my other ideas so politely. Oh, it looks so good. It turned out so good. I might have to turn so I'm more in the direct light over there. Um, I love it so much. This is Bee by the Moon by Wild Violet Cross Stitch. I'll put her link below to her Gumroad. It's super adorable. It's only two colors. I used Karen Impressions. I don't know, like the wool blend ones um, that I got from Stitch Nanigans. I don't remember the colors, but they're awesome. Oh, it's so good. Uh, and I stitched this on a 28 count linen that I just got somewhere. So it's just a dark green. Um, and then I picked up this frame at the thrift store a year or more ago, and I've been waiting for the right project for it. And it had cross stitch in it. And I was really pleased. I ripped out, it was, it was like really nicely sealed. Um, it had like a felt backing and I ripped it off and <laughs> this is my lovely finish and theirs was very similar. So that made me feel good. Um, and this now hangs in our kitchen or like dining, our dining nook. And I love it so much. So thank you, Ryan, for this fabulous design. Everybody go stitch it. It took like, I don't know, three hours to do. I have no idea, but it's very quick. That did not work. Okay, I have to be careful not to bump into that because it will fall. Um, so I'm super proud of that. And then 
Last time I showed you Birdie's progress on a piece that she had picked out from my stash and she finished it and she FFO'd it. So McKenna, she's taking after you, not taking after me, who finishes something and then like, this was pretty good. I did this in August, no, July. Don't remember, I, uh, July or August because I had it at the New Jersey retreat and I finished it, you know, within a few months, but Birdie finished it within like two days. Well, FFO'd it within two days. <gasps> Look at it! It's so cute! Uh, so this was from, oh, I should have written it down, like the 2016 Halloween dress cross stitch, maybe. I'm not sure. I'll look it up and put it down below. And she changed the colors. It was all charted in like boring brown grays. And so she picked out, um, the cauldron is Weeks Chesapeake Bay. The little smoke curly cues are like cinnamon, maybe. I forget. And then the white for the words and the moon and some of this stuff is Green Onion by Crescent Colors. So she did a great job. Um, I'm super proud of her. She has since stitched something for me. I'm not allowed to see it yet and I'm so excited to see it because I mean as a stitcher obviously you know like it's a big deal and someone makes something for you but she also designed it for me and I've got she is I'm just, I'm so excited. And then she also has a kit that she um, is starting maybe soon, I'm not sure. And then she also kitted up this project. So she'll be making her own Bee by the Moon. Um, so I'm just super proud of her for adopting this hobby and I hope it sticks with her for a long, long time. And I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna support her <laughs> stitching as much or as little as she wants. Um, so I helped her, I kind of walked her through FFOing. We did these at the same time. Um, so this is just mounted on sticky board and then secured um, on the back. And then we just, I picked up this little cutting board at the dollar store, I think, and painted it. Well, she painted it um, and there it is. So it looks super cute and I'm super proud. Um, other FFOs, I stitched the date 2019 on this Christmas ornament so that I would be forced to actually finish it, and I'm super proud that I did. Um, so I think I showed this long, long ago. Oh, look how cute it is. This is uh, from the Gift of Stitching magazine, which is no longer available. Uh, but this is The First Day of Christmas by Nancy Pedersen. Peterson, I don't know, but look how pretty that is. This is my first experience with black work and I loved it and then immediately bought a black work pattern from Arlene works by ABC that I have barely touched since but you know baby steps um and so I just also put it on a little scrap piece of sticky board and then I decided to get a little creative with the finishing and this is what I came up with <laughs> so super high tech um I'm planning to give this to my mother for Christmas. So mom, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, I just spoiled it. Don't look, close your eyes. Um, but I'm super proud of it. And I put the date in and then real sneaky, right there are my initials. So I will put it up here temporarily. Oh, that's not gonna be visible, is it? Ta -da! Someday I'll have a whole Christmas tree of ornaments, but in the meantime, I'm just stitching them and giving them to my mother. So, okay, we'll do that. I also started to FFO this and then realized I forgot a really essential component. And then I also realized I really want to do it as like a little pillow, but I was on a sticky board mounting phase. And so I finished up this little snowman and his snow dog. Uh, Mitchy, Mitch Stitch, and I bought this pattern and the beads at Keepsakes uh, the first year we went to StitchCon. And because we just, we saw it stitched up and it was framed and the frame was like, it was like an open frame without glass and it was super poofy. And then his arms were sticking out and it was the cutest thing ever. So he should have little sticks for his arms, obviously, because he's a snowman. Um, and I stitched it like pretty soon after and then didn't do anything with it. And Michelle just posted that she had stitched hers and she gave it arms and it was super cute. 
so I think I'm going to pull this off and sew it into a little pillow and give him arms. So we'll see if that happens this year. I don't remember who the designer is. I'm sorry. Okay. I have two other FFOs that I don't have with me because they were both gifts. Um, one of them I have released the pattern for on topknotstitcher.com and the other one will be released at some point this week. I need to just like finish up, finish it up. Um, so first off, the one that you all have gotten to see already. Oh, hold on. It disappeared. Oh, there it is. Um, I'm just going to show you on here. Oh, this is best day ever. I'm so proud of it. I love it so much. I designed and stitched this for my friend's wedding. Uh, it was her request. She sent me a picture of something and she was like, hey, could you stitch something like this for our like guest book table? And I was like, yeah, how about I do this and this and this? And also I make it bigger and better and your colors and all that. <laughs> um, so these are her wedding colors and then their date and initials are in there. And so if you would like to stitch a beautiful understated wedding sampler, because there's some nice wedding pieces out there and there are a lot of ways to make a wedding cross stitch that someone who isn't a stitcher can love and appreciate and be meaningful and special for their for their day um but i was not super inspired by any of them like way long ago when i was making a cross stitch for a friend's wedding and so i was really delighted to have the opportunity to design something even better um and this can be used as a, an anniversary piece or a wedding piece and then i also um i charted an alternate version oh there's me looking so proud of it i love it so much so proud um but i also charted an alternate version so i gave it different colors i love this piece because it's only like four or five colors depending on how you want to do your flowers and letters um, so it's really easy to customize to your own palette. And then I charted this one to have just some extra greenery instead of the dates. So I'm super, super, super proud of it. Uh, it's available in my shop and I hope you like it. If you have any other, uh, uh, what am I saying? I have no idea. I just totally lost my train of thought. Um, and then the other one I have not posted anything about yet. This was a design uh, inspired by the panic that is uh, just going to have to happen when you get your company CEO for Secret Santa. Yeah. So we have a Secret Santa exchange, and uh, this is the first year that we did Secret Santa. We've always done White Elephant at my office, and I'm really glad Secret Santa is so much better because I don't, I don't enjoy white elephants where you get stuck with junk that no one wants. Um, and we have a budget of zero to $25 to support those of us who are crafty. And I got the CEO. So I was like, oh no. <laughs> First of all, I don't work with him very much. Uh, second, I've seen his Amazon returns pile. Like I can't get him anything that he can't just handle on his own. So I just took a moment to think about what does he like? What would be meaningful and helpful or at least not cause me extreme financial or psychological stress? And I ended up charting something, oh, sorry, I'm not used to doing two tech things at once. Okay, ended up charting this little badger look how cute he is. Um, so this is his favorite animal. It's a spirit animal. His, uh, I don't know, mascot, his nickname, all things badger. Uh, so I thought it would be quite appropriate to stitch him a badger. This was an amazing piece because it was pretty fun once I had the general idea of what I was going for. It was pretty fun to design um, something a little different, not my typical, I mean, not that I really have a design aesthetic yet, but, um, it's not like really my, my thing. 
And then it was so great because once I stitched the outlines, it was just filling it in. And so I took this project with me on the train. And I've sometimes carried stitching around with me, but never something that's like so easy to stitch on the go. And I stitched it all in hand because it was faster and easier to carry around. And it blew my mind because then I, like time outside of my train stitching was super minimal. And like train stitching, I don't even count because normally I'm just on my phone. Um, and I don't know what it was like the universe just knew that like Christmas was on the line, but I got to sit on my commute probably 50% of the time, which never happens. It's usually like once a week on my trip there or back, not both. I get to sit for part of the ride. <laughs> and a lot of times like there might be uh, the, the possibility of a, of a seat, but I just choose to stand cause I don't, I don't mind it. But when I have stitching in my bag, then I really want to be able to sit. And so I don't know if I was just more aware of it or the people knew I had a Christmas stitch with a deadline. I'm not sure. Um, and then I had a good amount left on it the weekend before our holiday party. And I ended up stitching it in the car, uh, we went down to Big Sur over Thanksgiving weekend. So I had a nice three hour drive back and was able to just stitch the whole time, just filling it in, which was wonderful. Uh, and then I, luckily I work across the street from a frame and craft store. And so I went across the street, picked up a frame, brought it home, stuck it on some sticky board, stuck it in the frame. It looked amazing. It looked like a way, way nicer gift than anyone could possibly hope to buy for $25. Um, and then I gave it to him the next day at our holiday party and he really loved it. And he uh, <laughs> did the same thing that my dad does when he receives a gift that, gift that he likes, where he then like walks around the party showing it to everybody, like showing it off. Uh, so I found that a little bit endearing and annoying and also lovely because I was super proud of my gift and I liked having the opportunity to brag about it. And I talk about stitching quite a bit around my coworkers, but I, I haven't really seen anything that I've made. So it was fun to be able to show that off in person. I showed them some pictures, but, um, and everyone kept saying that like I won Secret Santa and I was like, yes, I totally did. Um, but I also, I am super pleased because a lot of people knew that I would be, that I was gonna be stitching something because I'm not good at secrets. And I had the CEO, so like I was like, no one's gonna tell him, and no one's gonna spoil it for him. So like I don't care, I'm gonna tell everybody. Um, but then it encouraged. There were I think like six or seven other handmade gifts, which was really cool. Um, so very successful Christmas stitch. I don't want to do any gift or deadline stitching for a while because I did those two things. I model stitched two things for Ryan. Uh, which have you all watched all of the Mittagong retreat recap videos? Because did you see the little koala biscornu? It's so cute. It's unbelievably cute. The pattern will be released in, I think she said January or February. So like hold your horses if you were not at Mittagong, but like get ready because that koala is a cutie. Uh, but I just, I wanted to stitch for myself for a while. So let me show you what I've been stitching. Um, I'm trying to focus myself somewhat. So I put most of my whips into a bin and I realized I wasn't stitching because I didn't like any of the ones that I had left out or not, not that I didn't like them, but I just didn't feel like working on them. So I mixed things up and, um, I let myself start some new things. So just stitch what you want, you know, um, but I will show you where things are at. Starting with you know it, you love it, the primitive hair. <gasps> a spooky night to all. Oh, I love this so much. This was our, excuse me, this was our retreat exclusive at Sassy Jacks. I think that you can get this chart at Sassy Jacks. I could be wrong, but I feel like I saw Isabel comment that somewhere, that she's not selling the chart, but Kim over at Sassy Jacks is. So I'll put their link below and you can see if that's correct. Um, I really, really love it. I have a couple, I'm like so close to finishing this. It's insane. There's like a couple leaves and details 
I forget, something's here. Oh, the text that says a spooky night to all and then finishing the border. Somehow my border's in the right place, <laughs> but most of the stitching is off. Um, so I almost ripped out the border and I was just gonna like take out this, this leg of it and move it over a stitch. And I was like, you know what? I really don't care. Uh, so I kept it and I don't know. My border wasn't off though. My ability to start the H in the right, actually it's, I started the H in the right place, but there's like a couple stitches missing in here. And so then this part of the H is in the wrong place. And then everything else is in the wrong place because of that. And you know, we're just working with it. It's fine, totally fine. Um, so this is super close to being done and maybe I'll do that sooner rather than later. Um, obviously I changed it. It's charted to have a black cat because Halloween is very black cat heavy, but I made it orange for jam. And so then I switched a bunch of these colors so that it would be, it would fit with my orange cat. Um, so yeah, this could be done really, really soon. And I know how I'm going to FFO it and everything. Cool. I've got my three broomsticks needle minder available in my shop. And then this is a new one. It's not actually released yet. It's this cool stained glass looking thing. So there's a little preview. I am stitching this not on the called for, but on crunchy October leaves. I don't think that's what it's called. Crunchy October linen from the primitive hair. And loving it. Um, so that has gotten a little attention since you last saw it. Uh, the main thing I've been working on I actually have, so the main thing I've been working on was the badger. Um, and then I have another new start that I cannot show you because it is being designed. Um, and then I started my Biltmore Christmas piece. I love this so much. Okay, first of all, I'm stitching it on a six by six Q-snap that I just, I've never used six by six before and it's blowing my mind. It's adorable, it's so tiny, it's so cute. And I really like it. Um, so this is Biltmore Christmas, Christmas sky. There's Santa. I stitched him last night. I was getting kind of cranky at this piece and I realized it's because I had only stitched blues and light gray. And so I put Santa in. Uh, and this is a piece that Ryan and I both got when we went to the Biltmore at the Primitive Hair Retreat. It's called Biltmore Christmas by P the Posey Collection. Um, and she does a lot of these like landmark type pieces and I super love it. And it's got a lot of big chunks that are just solid stitching. Like it's not the most intricately, you know, it's not like super confetti heavy. Um, so I'm pretty excited to work on this leading up to my trip home for Christmas because then I will plan it accordingly where on the plane I can have a lot of sections that are just filling in. Um, or maybe on the train. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, I just, I really, really love it. I love, it also makes me think of Ryan and our trip and it's just super cozy and great. Ooh, and then I wanted to show you how I'm currently keeping my threads for this project because um, at the time I started it, I didn't have any thread keeps handy and I couldn't find my hole punch to make one because usually I just take a like a greeting card or a Christmas card and then hole punch it and use it and I couldn't find it so I was in a tizzy and then I realized I had this little portfolio it's like a business card holder that I picked up I think maybe it came with a planner or something um like from Target or something, I'm not sure, but it's got all these little business card pockets. And so I just took little index card side, well, they're basically business cards um, that I had from my shop, because sometimes I put needle minders on them for shipping. Um, and I just wrote the name and symbol, and then I've got the thread. And it's working okay. It's kind of like a Floss Buddy-esque system, but, could be replicated for like a dollar and it's a little cumbersome sometimes if you like you can access it on the front or the back and 
so in theory, like I would take out one strand and then I'd put the rest back here. In reality, like it just all gets tangled and knotted super easily. So it's not, it's not foolproof, but I'm really enjoying it. And I'm curious to keep testing it out with this project. And then it just, it just wraps up so nicely. So I don't know, have you guys ever used a, a floss hack like that? Because I'm curious. Uh, okay, so that's a new start and a whip. This one I started, I actually don't remember. I may have started this for Mania, but I may have started it sooner than that. I'm not sure. Um, this is a chart that I got from Stitchy Christmas last year in our gift exchange, and I'm not going to take it out of the Q-Snap, but... It's got a little barn over here and some trees and then a little house and it says Merry Christmas. Uh, this is from the, I only have my working copy in here. I think it's from the Scarlet House, I wanna say. Um, copyright 2018, I didn't even know that. This came out last year. Uh, it's in a grime guard that's way too big for it, but that's okay. Uh, and I have a Maleficent needle minder because, you know, she's, she's my favorite Disney villain. Oh, and I also have, oh, a nice Christmassy Mary needle minder. That's more appropriate. That's an interesting pairing. Um, so I really enjoy this piece. It does not have all that much left to go because there's like a couple more trees and another, I think there's a church on the other side and some snow and then the rest of Christmas and Mary. It has a lot left, <laughs> but it's very fun. So, uh, thank you again to Karen who I stole this from. I think it was Karen. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> uh, okay. So I'm going to work on that one a little bit holiday card with threads. It's just so handy. Oh, the chart's right here. Okay, all my floss is in front of the nice picture. That's the Scarlet House picture. You don't need that. Oh, Abigail. Here's a little picture. It's gonna look like that. Super cute. So will I finish it in time for this Christmas? No, I don't think so. It's fine. It'll do. And then this other one I haven't really worked on, but it's in my pile of things because I finally chose a quote for it, although I haven't charted it or stitched it and I don't remember what it is. <laughs> I'm so good at this. Um, long, long ago, I showed off this Anne of Green Gables piece. I don't have the chart anymore. I lost it and I don't remember who it's by, but it's, it's Green Gables, right? Um, so I need to finish stitching in the windows and then it's started to have a garden underneath, but the garden looks like meh. Um, and I decided I just want to keep it with the trees. And then it's, there's a quote and there's this quote where Anne is like, she's looking out the window and she's like, ah, oh, what a world. But you know, much more poetic than that. <laughs> I don't remember, but I'm going to stitch it in there and frame this so we can go on our bookshelf. I'm sitting in front of all of our Anne books, but there's a bunch of them sitting, they're like way down here. I would just pull some out for you. Um, okay, so that is my big goal. Before we next talk, I want to have finished Anne. That would be great. And then I have a piece I cannot show you. And then I also have, I haven't started it yet, but I realized my Top Knot Shop logo would be really cute stitched up. And so I charted it up and since my favorite color is gray, no surprise there, I'm going to put it on this Lakeside Linen Vintage Flagstone with my very favorite Inkwell by Color and Cotton. I'm super excited to see how that comes out. So my logo is white on black and this will be dark gray on light gray, but I'm pretty, pretty, pretty excited. Um, so stay tuned for that. Maybe I'll have that done because um, it will be pretty quick. Okay, those are plans. We talked about all of the whips, all of the finishes. Let's talk winners because I have two winners to announce. Let me get out my box of stuff that's next. 
Um, long ago, I promised to pass the stash for this chart iced tea from Midnight Stitching. And then I kept forgetting to actually draw a winner and then announce it in my video. So I'm finally gonna announce that this goes to Cassie G. So Cassie, if you still want this, I think this was like three months ago that I offered to give this away. Um, but I'm gonna go back and comment and this will be for you. So congratulations. Um, to apologize for my lateness, I will also be adding in some other little, little goodies. And then I, oh, I don't have it here because I already packed it up. Um, my, one of my recent designs, the, my hat, my cat, no, that's not what it is. My cat, my hat, my pumpkin, and my bat on a little wooden pumpkin. And so I had an extra one that I was giving away in my last video and it goes to Amy. Amy loves toads. Girl, it was really quite fun too. <laughs> I like pulled a winner this morning and I was also packing up shop orders and Amy had just purchased something from my shop. And so I combined them and I'm very excited. It's just like the most beautiful kismet thing when that happens. So, yay. Um, thank you all for your interest and support and enthusiasm over that pattern. I still have some pumpkins left in the shop, um, like two or three maybe, I'm not sure if you need one. Um, and then I also want to, offer a new giveaway in this video. I'm announcing it right now. Maybe I'll even also remind us both at the end. Um, Cause I would love, love, love to thank you all for your uh, support and enthusiasm over my shop and all things needle minders and designs and scissors and whatever else I carry at any given time. Um, so for this week's giveaway, month's giveaway, who knows? It might, it won't be three months till I draw a winner. I pinky promise that feels safe. Yeah. Yeah. It won't be three months. Um, so if you would like to enter a top knot giveaway, please go to my shop, check it out, take a look, and then let me know your favorite needle minder that you see. And then you might end up receiving it from me. Who knows? Some are in super limited quantities. So if you see one that you really love, don't, don't risk that. You might want to buy it, but also I'm not doing this so that you'll buy needle minders. I just want to share the love. And there's a lot of really great stuff on there, a lot of cool Christmas stuff. And then for this month, for December, I'm going to also include in the giveaway this super cute scissor fob. Amazing. So this was made by uh, the lady behind Factura Designs. I carry her printed cross stitch charts in my shop. And she sells really beautiful scissor fobs and other little like notions and things in her store. And um, it's really cute. It's really sparkly and wintry and awesome and amazing. And I love it, but I also love you all. So I want to share the love. Um, so if you want to win this super cute fob and a needle minder of your choice, please leave a comment below with your favorite needle minder from the Top Knot Stitcher shop viewable at topknotstitcher.com, which is on Etsy. It will redirect you to Etsy. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other, I already told you last day for orders is December 15th. And I think, I think that's it. I don't want to bug you about shop stuff because like, please ignore all of it and you don't have to buy anything from me, obviously. I love you no matter what. Um, but I think that's all my news right now. So let's go into purchases. I've got a lot of cool stuff that I'm super excited about. Um, oh, one that I'm most excited about I don't actually have with me. Should I do that thing where I leave the camera running and I go grab it? It's like my favorite thing ever when people do that because like I just, I love that we can do that with each other because you're just sitting there stitching and you can handle it. I can leave for 30 seconds. You can look at my beautiful treat and my beautiful stitching and Birdie's beautiful stitching and like, it's chill, it's cool. You're probably getting annoyed that I'm talking about it this much. So I'm gonna go grab the thing that I was most excited to show you about. And I'll be right back.
Jam is hard snoozing right now on my bed. I didn't want to disturb him, but hopefully he will make an appearance. I also hope you enjoyed seeing my pajama pants because you know I'm all cozy all the time. Okay, we're ready. Do you watch Lindy Stitches? Of course you do. She's amazing. She's hilarious. She has super fun, beautiful designs and she makes super informative, helpful videos. Did you watch her video where she shows you how to sew on pom-pom trim? It blew my mind. Uh, she recently came out with these adorable scissor birds. Oh my goodness. How much do you love him? Uh, so I had it on my radar. I was like, oh yeah, I totally want a scissor bird. I'll like probably put it on my Christmas list. And then she posted that there were some misfits. And so you can see his coloring is a bit wonky. And so he was half off and I was like, ah, oh, yes. I want this wonky little bird. He's so cute. So he sits on top of my sewing machine table right now and he has snake scissors because they just, they fit the best in him from all the scissors that I had. And they make me super happy. <laughs> and he makes me super happy. So I love him. I don't think there are any misfits left, but I think Stephanie still has some regular birds. If you need one, let's put him up here. I love that this just becomes show and tell and I get to just display all the things. Um, <laughs> Oh, this is also going to include some happy mail because uh, I sent a, well, I tried to send needle minders to Australia and they ended up coming back to me. It's a long story. I don't want to talk about it. But since my needle minders could not get there in time, I did design a little freebie pattern based on jam. And um, as a little thank you, I got my very own Deckma 4D stash bag. This was the official bag of the Mittagong Retreat. It's super nice, I love it. It's all black with the Death Before D stash, which is a wild violet pattern. And she has it stitched onto a tote bag. This is just printed on a tote bag. It's amazing, I love it super much. Um, and Michelle kindly sent that to me as a little Christmas goodie. Um, and she also sent me, well, actually I'm not gonna show you because um, I want it to be a secret from Ryan. What else was in here? So, never mind. Secrets. So, thank you, thank you, thank you, Michelle. That's currently the bag that's holding all of my active projects. Uh, okay. Haul, haul, haul. Jen. Delicious Jen. Delicious Threads Jen. Have you seen? She launched her own website. It's beautiful. It's stunning. She has a laser. Some may say laser cats, some may say it's just a laser. I like the laser cat idea. Um, super, super, super awesome stuff that she is doing. So in addition to her fabulous bags, um, she's also making the coolest engraved needle minders. Can you even? And thread drops, little Christmas trees. I am so excited about these. They're so, I love that they're so little because I hate when you get like giant, like I've got these really cute cat thread drops, but they're like the size of this bag and like, that's not gonna work for me. Oh, so cute, so festive. I need to figure out a project that they can go on. Um, and then I actually got to go hang out with Jen recently cause <laughs> she's my neighbor, it's cool. And I wish she was more of my neighbor. She's like 20 minutes away. Um, but I got to go over to her house and I got to see the laser cats in person. And then she let me, uh, make my own. Ah, so that is my top knot logo. It did some interesting things where the lines intersect. So it made it a little different than the, than the actual logo, which is very square and angular. It doesn't have that kind of like, I don't know, rounded corner effect. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't have a business card here to show you, but maybe you know, maybe you don't care. It's cool. Uh, this is awesome. So I got to watch it getting cut out and then I she made me needle minder it all on my own. 
so lazy of her. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Um, I actually, I left her house and, <laughs> um, you know, I was best friends with her kids by the time I left, obviously. And so I was trying to like get out of there <laughs> before they all came home with me. And so I ended up, I left this cause it was on the sink cause we had sealed it, not on the sink. It was like off to the side cause we had, you know, sprayed the sealant on it. And so I would like, was all the way down their street and then she called me and I had to go back and get it. And obviously I had to go back to get it because it's amazing. Love it, love it, love it. Um, so super excited for Jen and super excited to see what other fun things come out of her shop now that she's up and running. Uh, go check her out. She just did uh, an exclusive bag, bag and thread keep and needle minder for Michelle's snowbird pattern and it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay, let's see what else is in my box of purchases. Uh, recently on Stash and Load, I picked up a couple Prairie Schoolers because I just super love those leaves and vines and like the story that goes with it and whatever. And this little Santa who's like, hooray, Christmas. <laughs> it just makes me so happy. Um, and then I also, yes, yes I did. I snagged the Red Queen Owl Forest kit. Queen of Hearts, whatever. Red Queen, same thing. Uh, don't message McKenna. She does not have more of these in stock. You cannot get on the waiting list. There is no waiting list. She is trying to get more. They, you can maybe get the printed copy of the charts for the villains from her, but some of them might be sold out. I have no idea. Don't message her. Just go look on her website and then keep checking. That's my PSA, McKenna. Um, it's gorgeous. I will not do an unboxing because a few other people have, but I would really like to start stitching her soon. I'm not like the biggest Alice in Wonderland person in the world, but like she's just so pretty. And I was also really tempted by the Bat King because he was so cool. And also by the Ice Queen because did you see the polar bears and the owl? And the Poseidon-y one I don't really care about as much. So that was that one's safe. But um, yeah, I might need to buy the charts for the other ones and get them up and make it happen. Oh, she just looks so cool. And it's a gorgeous kit. So well done, Owl Forest. Well done, McKenna. I also did a little shopping on 1884. Um, this was part of her charity sale. Uh, recently she donated she just donated like over ten thousand dollars for breast cancer research or something i don't know but i supported it and got myself a whole bunch of gray 40 count linens i have an aesthetic um i recently i like bought these and then i kind of was like oh i think i'm not stitching that much because like almost everything i'm stitching and working on is on 40 count or above and then I promptly stopped all 40 count stitching, but I still love it. I love it so much. I just needed a, a break from it. Um, I also picked up, this is a combination of McKenna and stash unloading. I got some dinky dyes and NPI and silken colors. Don't know what I'm going to do with them, but I just really like buying silks when I can, especially when they're like at a discount. You know, I'm all over it. Okay, and then a couple other haul items. Um, oh, some other things I got on Stash Unload. Weeks Dye Works Kudzu Linen. Don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I think this is Weeks Moon Glow. Don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but it's pretty. Actually, this would be really good for my That's My Jam pattern. If you've seen them, Mitagong recap. You might know what I'm talking about. Um, this one I got a while ago. That's not new. This is not new. Okay, this is just fabric that I did not put away. Um, and then I also got, and I am probably the last person in the world to talk about, the Color and Cotton Halloween box. I got the mini box and I ended up, I decided the kit that it came with, the little creeping it round chart, it was really cute, but just like not, not really my style, not something I wanted to start anytime soon. So I decided to uh, rehome that. And then I kept 
uh, the other linen. This is the tombstone 40 count gray linen. So it fits right in. Uh, and I kept the flosses, although I'm think I'm looking at them and thinking like, I probably will use one or both of these oranges because jam. So I use a lot more orange now, but like, and probably this green cause it's nice. Will I ever use those two purples? I don't think so. So I might, I might give those away or sell them or save them for a retreat or some other like exchange. We'll see. I haven't decided, but it was really beautiful. It was really fun. And I will definitely be purchasing her mystery boxes in the future because they are gorgeous and very well done. That's that. Let's see. We're almost done. I have one more thing. It's not stitching related, um, but it is Etsy related. And I bought a few necklaces from this shop. She's not a stitcher. Um, but she has different like stones and crystal pendants and earrings. And I'm not gonna take it out of the packaging because this one's a gift and I don't wanna have to take it out and put it back. But it's really cute. And she had everything was 50% off for Black Friday, uh, Cyber Monday. And she's a new seller. And I was like, you know, I wanna love and support you because I get what it feels like. And I wanna be the reason why you're like, ah, got a sale because it's the best feeling when you're when you're just starting out and I like I like I don't know anything about this girl but I like to think that she's like putting herself through college you know and she's found a hobby that she enjoys and she is like I wonder if I can make any money living for a living by doing this and I want to be like yes girl you can reach for the stars dream your dreams so I got a couple of necklaces uh, for myself and for friends this is the only one I have with me right now one of them is like flower petals in resin. It's gorgeous. Um, so I'll put her link below because I'm making all of this up. She could be, you know, I don't know, but I like her. So enjoy. Uh, that is all that I have to show. I do have a shout out though. Rocio, who, what is your channel name? Oh no. She's in the Bahamas. She's a speech pathologist. She's super cool and super funny. Um, she stitches lots of really beautiful things like beautiful mirabilias and things. Uh, what is your channel name? Bahama Stitchery? No. Something that has to do with tropical something. I'm so good at this. Uh, she's super fun and uh, you should definitely go check her out. Uh, ah, dropping things on myself and give her a holler. I'm like so trying so hard to think of your channel name and I cannot. And it's really, really, really gonna bug me. Anyway, she just made her first video and I was dying laughing the whole time because she's super entertaining and fun. And go check her out. I don't know how many other ways to say that, just go do it. Uh, so that is kind of it, I think. Um, I, I can't believe it's already the middle of December. It's basically the middle of December. Uh, it's been such a weird, long, crazy year and I am tired. I am so tired. Uh, I am planning a Q and a video, um, on how I balance having a full-time job and a creative side business and just like living life as a young single person in their late twenties. <laughs> um, I don't really know how I do it and I'm kind of barely doing it sometimes. So I don't know, but I've been planning that video for a while. I sat down to make it and I started filming it and I was like, I'm so tired and in such a cranky mood. This is not going to be a fun video to watch. I was boring myself. So, I rerouted plans, but I do plan to make that video. If you have any questions that you're curious about, please leave them down below. I really love talking productivity and organization and time management and self-management and life management and like goal setting and all that kind of stuff. I find that my skills in it are kind of declining because I'm juggling so much all the time. Uh, and I have a really mentally exhausting day job. And then I also am doing a lot of things uh, for, my stitching business and also just like living my life is tough. Um, so I want to share a little bit of like what I've learned along the way and how I do what I do. 
and hopefully get ideas and learn some things from all of you. Uh, so like I said, if you have any questions, leave them down below. If you would like to win a super cool wintry scissor fob and a needle minder of your choice, leave a comment of your favorite needle minder from my shop down below. And I hope you have a really excellent Christmas. Oh, also I've been, so people have been doing like whip down videos. I don't, I figured I would probably do a whip parade video at the end of the year because I definitely started a ton of stuff and I definitely can't remember everything. And I did go through recently and pull out a couple things to say never mind to, but I feel like I'm not skilled at that and it might be good to like go through it all together. Do you agree? Do you, is, are you interested in that? It might not happen until January. So it might be more of a new year thing. Um, I have been thinking through like my stitching plans for next year a little bit. I don't want to make it too rigid because I know I won't follow through with that, but I did really good up until like August or September with uh, the help of Magical Stitches. I stitched so much and I got into a routine of stitching almost every day and like significant stitching time, not just like, oh, I have 10 minutes. Um, or like I'll put in, you know, two lengths of thread and then get distracted and not pick up my project again. That happens to me a lot. And then things with my shop picked up a lot and things with my job just got a little bit more hectic and took up more brain space. Uh, and I don't know, somehow I, I, I stitch way, way less than I wish I did. Um, and I'm trying to just give myself lots and lots and lots of grace for that. Like I'll st I'm, I don't want stitching to be a chore by any means. Um, but I definitely want to be intentional going into the new year because I tried to get back into magical stitches or I also tried the enchanted stitches and I really loved when it worked for me. It was awesome. It was exciting to have like reasons to stitch on things and have goals to work towards and have like, you know, team spirit and competition and all of that. Um, but then just like something happened where it got a little bit too complicated to keep track of and it wasn't fun anymore and that's fine and it's still fun for a lot of people and that's wonderful. Um, but so far all the other stitching challenges still seem like just too much mentally. I cannot keep track of that kind of like anything. Um, so I've been trying to do more of like, oh, I'm going to stitch on this until I finish this border or until I finish this house or whatever, like set some sort of, uh, milestone before I switch projects and that's been helpful but I also just want to finish everything but I also want to start things it's the eternal struggle right anyway I'll figure all of that out let's see if we can get jam for a quick appearance if you have any tips for like how to make your stitching plans for the year let me know I started and a forest grew on New Year's Day two years ago so I'm thinking I might stitch on that on New Year's Day, just to see. Hi, hey Jan. Come here. He's here. You just can't see him. Come here. Oh, sorry. That didn't work. Come here, please. Oh, there you are. Your fans want to say hi. They want to say hi. They love you. Christmas jam, Christmas jam. He's so mad at me. I gave you treats though. Here. He's so cute. Okay, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Um, leave me a comment, leave me a holler. Uh, stay tuned for a badger appearing on my shop. And that's it. I love you. Thank you so much for being here. Let me know what you're up to this holiday season that you're super excited about. Let me know your holiday stitching plans, your 2020 plans. Let me know whatever questions you have. Just, just hit me up in the comments, whatever you want to say. I'm here for it. Happy Christmas. Happy stitching. See you later.